It's happening. We are living in a far more wonderful and wild time in space than any which has come before, as both SpaceX and Elon Musk just officially announced Starship, the most powerful rocket in history, is now ready for the inaugural flight. This test flight will pave the way for future missions to the Moon, Mars, and beyond. So then what are the final preparations, and when will Starship finally fly? All this and more in today's episode of Great SpaceX. SpaceX is racing towards conducting its Starship rocket's highly anticipated test flight. Yesterday, the company broke the silence on the test just moments before it shared that the vehicle is fully stacked at the company's test facilities in Boca Chica, Texas. The plan is to carry out a launch rehearsal next week of Starship. The launch attempt would then follow a week later around no earlier than April 17th, based on SpaceX's updated info. Starship fully stacked at Starbase, SpaceX said in a tweet. Team is working toward a launch rehearsal next week, followed by Starship's first integrated flight test around a week later, pending regulatory approval. Four hours later, this has once again been confirmed by SpaceX's founder and CEO, Elon Musk. He shared the tweet from the company and wrote, Starship is stacked and ready to launch next week, pending regulatory approval. The wet dress rehearsal, a fueling and launch rehearsal test, includes many of the procedures SpaceX engineers will perform on launch day, such as pumping liquid oxygen and liquid methane propellant into the vehicle's super heavy first stage and Starship upper stage. This test will help verify a full launch countdown sequence as well as the performance of Starship and the orbital pad for flight-like operations. But don't worry too much because this won't be the first time Starship conducts this test. Previously on January 23rd, Ship 24 and Booster 7 completed Starship's first full wet dress rehearsal on the first try. An extremely impressive achievement for any rocket, let alone the largest in history. SpaceX then conducted a successful test firing of the 33 Raptor engines on the first stage booster of Starship back in February. This is the Starship's biggest test that has been the static fire of 31 engines at only 50% of rated thrust. For launch, Starship requires all 33 Raptor 2s to fire at 90% of rated thrust. In the weeks after the 31 engine static fire and leading up to launch, SpaceX has been installing enhanced shielding on the orbital launch table in order to provide better protection during launch. There is no flame diverter unlike on other launch pads, so the exhaust from all 33 engines will be able to spread in all directions. In fact, prior to SpaceX's announcement, Elon Musk shared via Twitter an amazing video about Starship and said, Starship preparing for launch. This is quite the pretty picture for space fans. The footage apparently captured by a drone shows off gorgeous seaside scenery as well as the 120 meter Starship, which will become the most powerful rocket ever to fly when it lifts off. And that should happen soon. SpaceX's latest announcement follows a notification from officials of Cameron County, which confirmed that there will not be a flight test next week. The hype about such a test began to build after rumors started to surface early this month. Placeholders by NASA for its WB-57 observational plane and the addition of Starship to the FAA's operational advisory indicated that things were moving fast in Boca Chica. But with the first flight of a fully stacked Starship slash Super Heavy comes various objectives and challenges. Challenges. The end goal of this mission is for Ship 24, also known as Starship, or the upper stage, to successfully re-enter the atmosphere and land about 100 kilometers or 62 miles off the coast of Kauai, which is an island in the Hawaiian Islands chain located in the Pacific Ocean. Currently, there is known payload on Ship 24, therefore the payload bay door has been welded shut. Recently posted exclusion zones and other notices give a greater indication of the trajectory that Starship will take. It will fly slightly south of east, just over the northern tip of Cuba. Starship will then travel across the southern Atlantic Ocean and pass over Namibia before traveling over the Indian Ocean. The final piece of land Starship is expected to pass over is Indonesia before heading out over the Pacific Ocean and re-entering near Hawaii. 
A test flight is one of the riskiest parts of Starship's development, especially due to the rocket's size. Starship is the only rocket in the world that uses almost three dozen engines on its first stage, and firing them together simultaneously and ensuring that they perform nominally during the flight will be an unprecedented technological achievement for SpaceX. At the same time, should things go awry, the firm must ground its rocket and meticulously scan the test's data to discover what went wrong. This process often takes months, and it will set back SpaceX's plans to launch its second-generation Starlink satellites through the rocket. Additionally, Starship is an integral part of NASA's Artemis program, as it is the only lunar lander selected by the space agency to land astronauts on the moon. NASA had originally planned a Starship demonstration mission for 2024, and any setback on the test could cause the agency to also push back its plans. Next up on today's updates, NASA and Axiom Space announced the first possible launch date of the commercial Axe 2 mission to the International Space Station on Thursday. The SpaceX Dragon spacecraft is slated to launch from Launch Complex 39A at Kennedy Space Center in Florida on May 8th at 10.43 p.m. Eastern. A launch on May 8th will yield a 37-hour flight before docking with the space station. Axe 2 will be the first private space mission involving both private astronauts pilot John Schaffner and astronauts representing foreign governments. Mission Specialist Ali Akarni and Rayana Barnawi of Saudi Arabia's first national astronaut program. It will also be the first Axiom mission commanded by a woman, space travel pioneer Peggy Whitson. The mission is the 10th human spaceflight for the Dragon spacecraft nicknamed Freedom. Dragon is currently being refurbished at Cape Canaveral in Florida and will be transported to the launch complex at the end of the month. This will be the first launch of this mission's Falcon 9 booster. X2 marks another step towards the growing commercialization of space travel. Sarah Walker, director of SpaceX's Dragon mission, said SpaceX is committed Committed to making low Earth orbit accessible to everyone. Angela Hart, manager of NASA's Commercial Low Earth Orbit Program Office, elaborated on the agency's vision for a global space marketplace and what that will look like. We're expanding the scope of people being touched by these missions, Hart said. You're going to see that exponentially as we keep doing this. As more people get involved, you're going to see an explosion that will equate into this marketplace. Axe 2 also represents a step toward broader global cooperation in space with U.S. agencies partnering with Saudi Arabia. Soufardini said Axiom Space has signed agreements for flights with the United Arab Emirates, which is in orbit with SpaceX Crew 6, Turkey, Italy, and Hungary. We're a bit agnostic. There are laws we have to follow, so we pay very close attention to those, and of course, there is technology transfer that we have to be very sensitive to, Sufredini said. We intend to service a global marketplace. We think it's very important that we have the largest community of countries that explore beyond low Earth orbit. We think what we're doing is not only serving a market, but more importantly, it's helping us as a species learn to live off planet, which is going to be very important for us. And that's just about it for today's episode. So thank you so much for watching, and if you enjoy what my team and I are doing, you can become a patron through our Patreon link in the description below. Otherwise, as always, this is Kevin with Great SpaceX, and my team and I will see you next time.